Hello and welcome to EV Review Ireland. My name is Derek Riley. We are on the shores of Loch Ennell in County Westmeath. And you might remember Loch Ennell. It's on the shores of where Belvedere House is located, but also a couple of years ago, we had that amazing photograph of that murmuration of birds on the lake. Um, I'll stick that up on the screen. Beautiful day, nice bright morning. And it's the kind of location that you're going to be coming in something like this when you're bringing your family. And that's what the EQB is all about. It is, it has the option of being an electric seven seater. So this is based on the GLB uh, combustion engine version. How will you know the difference? You will see some blue eyelids on the headlights. You'll see a light bar across the top. You'll see this closed off grill. And depending on the trim level, you'll see whether it has stripes or not. But this grill is going to be the main, and the light bar are going to be the main reasons that you're going to know whether this is a uh, the electric version, which is the EQB. And all of the Mercedes electric are EQ, or whether it's the combustion with the GLB. So style-wise, it's pretty similar. Moving down along, you'll see also an EQB flashing flag on the right-hand side. Uh, alloy wheels will be different as well. These are a lot more aero and they have glass black with um, some silver finish on it. They all come with 18s, all the different trims and all the different levels, but you can spec 19s and 20s on it. You've got your glass black retractable mirrors with the indicators built in. You have your matte black roof rails. You can get these again, depending on the trim in polished chrome, etc, uh, etc. Et uh, chrome door handles with keyless entry. The fact that this has kind of a 4x4 heritage or look, whether you'd go 4 by 4 in it or not is questionable. You have got the plastic cladding on the wheel arches. You have got the plastic cladding down along the side with the glass black in the middle of it. And when you start to walk down along the vehicle, you start to realize, yeah, this is pretty substantial. And you can see where they're starting to fit in that third row of seats. Uh, you may have watched, if you're interested in the EQB, you may have watched a couple of reviews when it launched in the United Kingdom a couple of months ago. And for some reason, Mercedes-Benz brought over a version without the two seats in it. So you've all these reviews talking about seven seaters and they don't have the seats in the back of it, but we'll rectify that today. You'll have a look to see what kind of space is left after the seats go up and uh, how much space is internally inside in it. But otherwise, front, you'll know the grille in it. Sidewise, if you put a side by side, the only difference you'd know would be the EQB flashing on the side. But let's spin it around and have a look to see what it's like um, from the rear. On the rear of the Mercedes-Benz EQB, you start to really start to see the difference because they've had to move things around. Because of this light bar, they've had to move the, um, usually the Mercedes-Benz badge is further up on the, on the rear. So they've moved that down. That's actually one that way of opening it as well. And then normally the license plate holder is at the bottom of that, which would be here. So they've moved that down into the, so a rear, uh, the rear diffuser is slightly different, rear bumper is slightly different. You have a lovely chrome scuff plate, decent size uh, boot with the third row down. You've got 475 litres and then with all the rows down, you've got 1700 odd litres. You have a small bit of storage in underneath as well. And um, that was for good enough for cables, etc. But because of those seats, there isn't too much of a footwell in it. You will also, you don't have a frunk in any of, because this is a, com um, a combustion engine, usually, and they put put batteries into it in an electric motor, there isn't that space in it. But you can see there now, I've got all my filming gear in it. And what we're gonna do is pop up the seats now, you can see, or waving one of the seats, so you can see the, the, the difference in the row behind it. But overall, there's power tail lift, I like the light bar on the back of it. Uh, so this is the EQB 300, comes in three different variations. The 250, which is a single motor, um, and then the 350 and the 300 are dual motor. And then over on this side, then you're gonna have the formatic, whether it's four wheel drive or not. Let's have a look on the inside. What's it like inside the Mercedes-Benz EQB? Very similar to all the other Mercedes-Benzes that we've reviewed, be that cars or some of the luxury vans. Lovely three-spoke steering wheel, and it has the same interactivity and the same way of connecting with the MBUX system as um, the EQA and the EQC. So on the steering wheel itself, you've got a couple of thumb sensors. In The right hand is to do with the driver display, and the left hand is to do with the infotainment cluster. On the behind that, then, you've got wipers and indicators and lights, and on the right hand side then you have a stock for your reverse neutral drive and park and then you've got your regenerative pe pedals behind the steering wheel which are to um, 
change the levels and there's three levels there's a d d plus and d minus and d minus is the, the harshest regen on it you've got two 10 inch screens behind that this one is touch screen you've got multiple air vents uh, and it's got that lovely quality mercedes-benz click three in the middle and one either side you've got some de depending on the you can go for uh, carbon fiber uh, you can go for silver and then there's two wood effects that you can have internally on the dash so on the right hand side of the door you've got your heated seat and on the passenger door as well then you've got your whatever trim level you have and this is the man-made vegan leather you've got your center lock and you've got your um, adjuster for the wing mirrors and the way of bringing them um, to close them you've got your four electric windows and then you've got the ability to lock the electric windows at the back you have a button down here then that will stop or that will open the the power tail lift in the trunk lights above my right knee and uh, we've talked about the steering wheel already and this has reach and rake and then start stop button is above my left knee underneath the row of three vents you have your air con system it's single zone you can get dual zone and you can get i think you can get tri zone as well for the rear passengers but this is single zone but underneath that then you've got a big storage area with a usb type a you've got your bottle holders your coffee cup holders behind that then you have another way of interaction with the mbux system it's got the the anchor the uh, wrist rest with the ability then of using this little mouse pad you've got some shortcut buttons underneath that bit of glass black going on you've got some brushed aluminium uh, either side of the transmission tunnel which we don't need anymore and then you've got your butterfly opening on the glove box or the sorry the armrest and that has a usb type c um half glove box one and a half bits it's kind of wide at the front and then it's, it goes in deeper at the back seats are lovely there isn't a a sunroof in this version so it has a black headliner and it has the carbon fiber effect trim with the lighter effect on the um, main upholstery of the car let's go into row two of three so that seat is set for me i'm 180 788 centimeters six foot two and so yeah good seats behind it and with these rear middle row seats you can move it forward or back and so it's a 60 40 split in the if, if the way that the seats move so i can move that forward a bit more and what it will do is it'll give the third row passengers a bit more space what they're saying is really the third row is for children or people below the height of 1.5 meters what i really like about it is and i get asked this a lot first of all electric vehicle with three with the ability to carry seven people three rows uh, also uh, an electric vehicle that has the ability to take a number of isofix positions usually three in the back but this one has four two in the middle and then two in the rear as well so it has that capability in the armrest you have a little shelf that's probably where the tri-zone goes and then you have the uh, usb type a with the difference between this and the glb is the the passenger foot wells aren't as deep because the battery pack is in underneath so you do ha don't have as much of thigh support within it but headroom is great and that leg room but the fact that it's movable if you've got that third row seat and then to get into the rear we'll have to put up the seats first which i'll show you how we do it but then to get into the rear then you will um, bring this down and then we don't want you coming down as well do we we do and then sliding it forward a bit of a kerfuffle oh there we go all the way a bit more and then people will get in that way i don't think that lifts up no so there's a small bit of um jump clambering in and clambering out but we'll do a right job of it now once we bring that up oh yeah okay perfect set for me now and what we'll do is we'll see if I can fit in the back I am higher taller than the higher I am taller than what Mercedes-Benz would recommend sitting in the back it's 1.5 meters so push uh, that seat is as close as I could get to my now again I could probably move my driver's seat forward a bit more if I am on a shorter journey but let's have a look at how the seats come up and also how we turn um get into the back and see if I can fit so what we need to do is first of all take out the cover oh, there we go that won't go in underneath and then there's a mat that protects your seats 
and then you can see the seats that are there and how they're positioned. So what we're going to do today is put up the right hand one. Stick that to the right. There's a red tab. There's a red tab here and then another pull handle here. And then your armrest goes up. So you've got decent space at the back of the seat there. And what we'll do is we'll go around to the side to show you how far forward that 40 bit of the seat goes. So with this seat then, you drop it down first, then slide it forward. And what that will do then, it will show you the access, how to get in and get out. So not great access, but for kids clambering in and out. Now the question is, will Derek be able to fit in? Let's have a look. It was at this moment that he knew. Yeah, I knew. Let's not look at that footage. Um, plenty of space in the back for kids and smaller people. And it's great to have the seven-seater on the market. Let's take it out for a drive. What's it like driving the Mercedes-Benz EQB? Very much like the EQA and the C. I think they've done a great job, even though it's not a ground-up EV. I find that the steering is probably a small bit light, but it's well-weighted. Uh, the suspension I think is amazing for Irish roads. If you haven't gone for a test drive of one of them yet, I'd recommend it. I think it's firm enough, but also comfortable enough. This is a country back road here in County Westmeath. Currently on the way to an Irish EV Owners Association meetup. I said uh, I'd drop off my girlfriend and dog in Mullingar and do the filming on Loch Ennell. I'd say one of my regular commenters, Des, is going to be delighted that I got a uh, a swan in the background of the shooting. Uh, Des is always a fan whenever there's wildlife coming into the shots. So we're taking the back roads between Mullingar and Athlone. So rather than motorway, you know, there's going to be very few cars that are bad on a motorway, but these country roads, and this is a, a uh, local road, it's not even a national primary road. So there's plenty of tops and turns and uh, undulations and it's very smooth. Um, really happy with it. I think it's, um, as I said, I think it's well weighted steering wise. Seats are lovely and comfortable and the visibility, because it's that higher form factor, it is definitely, um, there's so much visibility. And even with the rear row up and their headrests up, I have a fairly decent square of, of window to see out of. But the wing mirrors are good. They've got blind spot. Uh, this has cruise control, etc. but it, um, it doesn't have adaptive cruise control, so like all vehicles, you have to spec it to which one you want. Um, some stats. Different trim levels you get on the Mercedes-Benz EQB. You get, there's an addition one for those that want to be first movers on it and early adopters. But then there's the standard Mercedes trims that you're aware of. So there is the Progressive, there is the Electric Art, and then there's the AMG line. So depending on the trim, we'll detect some styling elements and some packs that you get included or not. This one is a EQB 300, so middle of the road, formatic dual motor, and it has just metallic paint and that night package and so that's bringing it in at 67,500 so um, any of the EQBs are going to be outside of the SE uh, the government grant here in Ireland which is 60,000 euros so 67 and a half thousand for this for a three row decent spec fully electric vehicle with four ISO fixed seat, in, seat positions in it there's nothing else in the market like it at the moment and I appreciate it. it's uh, it's on the expensive side but if you are in the market for a GLB or a more expensive um, Mercedes or sorry Tesla Model Y with the three rows when that comes but it's not in the market at the moment uh, Tesla Model X with the three rows not available at the moment because they've refreshed it so there's going to be a market for an electric seven seater and hopefully this will tick your box comes in 10 different colors your grays your blacks your uh blue which looks well there's a red there's a lovely rose color uh, which is uh, beautiful three different uh, suspension settings that you can actually get so you can buy the suspension setting that's adjustable if you're changing how you'd like to drive every now and again and you can adjust that then there is the comfort and then lastly there is the lowered comfort which is interesting the battery in the mercedes-benz eqb is a 66.5 kilowatt hour battery so not huge 
uh, by any means, but it's because it's that compromise of it's a combustion engine chassis and body form on it. Um, that's 168 kilowatts between the two electric motors on the front and rear axle, uh, and that's giving you 228 horsepower with 390 newton meters of torque. And so, depending on whether you go for the 200, the 250, the 300, or the 350, the 250 is single motor two-wheel drive and so that will give you less horsepower and less newton meters of torque this is the middle of the road and then you've got the 350 the difference between the two if you're looking for more range the 250 actually gives you more range because you're not carrying that extra motor and so the battery pack that's the same across all three will be able to bring you a bit further because it's not carrying that extra weight so which is a good one to, to remember um wltp they're saying about 416 kilometers and real world range is about 350 uh, ev database is saying 340 i'm getting about 350 but the temperature is starting to increase here in ireland we're in the mid teens in the celsius side of things and so it is starting to become perfect weather for electric vehicles so at the colder weather that range will go down what i like on the mercedes-benz website here in ireland anyway it can, you can, there's a range calculator on it and so what that will do is you say what type of driving you're doing whether it's rural whether it's motorway whether it's urban you talk about the um ambient temperature and then you also talk about the uh, whether you have the aircon on or not and it'll tell you what range you're going to expect from it so that's good that mercedes-benz and other manufacturers do this as well where the, you can say listen this is the kind of driving i'm going to be doing and whatever part of the country you're in whether it's in mullingar which is the coldest average temperature overall or whether it's in valencia down in cork which has the the warmest temperature in ireland you can put in your averages but ireland is fairly temperate in that uh, in that side of things so we're not going to have too much extremes but in colder weather your range won't be as long um, so just have to remember that charging it can take up to an 11 kilowatt on an ac charger but usually at home you'll have a seven kilowatt charger so you'll be doing it in about 10, 0 to 100 in about 10 hours dc it can do up to 100 kilowatts uh, peak uh, in ireland you, the majority of our chargers are 50 kilowatts so it'll take just over an hour to go from uh, 10 to 80 percent and if you get a faster charger can do it in around 30 minutes hopefully you've enjoyed today's review make sure you've subscribed to the channel we are on a drive to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2022 so if you're still watching this within 2022 and you haven't subscribed yet please do so make sure you leave a comment and let me know whether you're interested in the seven seater mercedes-benz eqb like the video and remember if you think an ev is for you leave it to me and i'll review thank you very much for watching